How's it going fam? Welcome back to Erica's EDC and today we have a weekly update on some of the test subjects that we have been running so far this month and I just wanted to talk a little bit uh, about philosophy of use and you know the the balance of having gear that works and that is logical but also having the knowledge to to use it. Um, that's always a fun discussion. I have a really great example of something that just happened today where knowledge was kind of overriding tools and I just wanted to talk about that whole thing. So we'll get into that after the, um, the update. We'll get into a little story time after. But what are we sipping? What are we flipping? We haven't done that in a while. Guys, tonight we are not flipping. <laughs> I wouldn't want to flip this. It was expensive. We are sipping Subculture Pilsner. This is from Branch and Blade. They are a brewery approximately an hour from me. Great beer. Really great people. I love them. Um, picked this up yesterday. So cheers to that. And flipping, we're not really flipping anything, are we? Because we don't have any like modern folders. We're testing two kind of old school things. Um, but the knife, the traditional knife that we are testing is the Case Sodbuster Jr. Recover, the Ultimate Slater from Josh Francis at Knife Guy Mods. I will put him down in the description below. This is a cross-cut micarta with Ultim Liner Recover, and then obviously the Jeff Davidson Gecko, okay? So those are the, the blades. Now, let's talk real quick about an update. Uh, I've been running this since... I don't know, the 27th of December, something like that. Um, this is in 80 CRV2 steel. So yes, it does pick up a patina. Excuse the iodine on my hands and how jacked they are. I am so sorry. Um, it picks up a patina. This is a spring steel. It is a low alloy steel. And I don't have the best experience with it in terms of edge retention. Um, so I kind of wanted to just test it further and see how this one did, basically. I haven't sharpened it yet. I've been trying to push the factory edge as far as I can, and it went dull pretty quickly, I will say. I stropped it back the first time on this JRE Industries bat strop. This has four sides. It has um, 3,000, 5,000, and 7,000 grit compound on it. And then raw bare leather. This is a bat strop that I've had for years. It works very well and it generally works great for softer steels, okay? So I, I stropped this on the bat strop the first time it needed to touch up. It came back pretty sharp, but not as sharp as I would want it. Um, in return, the edge didn't last very long at all, and I had to touch it up basically within a day of using it again, because I use my knives a lot. So when I went to strop it one more time before I just put a brand new edge on it, I tried something a little more abrasive. I used the Michael Richter strop. This is some really hard, gritty leather. I, I believe he sands it with sandpaper to just really bring up the surface and give you some good grit. And I put his 1.5 micron diamond emulsion spray on it that he actually made. And this is a, a very abrasive strop. It is so abrasive that if you have a factory edge pattern on your blade, it will remove that. So that's pretty abrasive. And that is what happened with this. I don't know if the camera will pick it up because we have pretty poor lighting right now, but I haven't sharpened this yet. Like it hasn't touched the stones, but you can see how you can't really see those grind lines from the factory edge bevel. It, it, they were actually polished out when I stropped it. So now it's very sharp, uh, very toothy, very sharp. I still don't think this edge is going to last crazy long. I, I'm excited to put an actual sharpened edge on it. But I will just say like, this is kind of the same experience that I've had with ADCRV2. It just doesn't have great edge retention. It has great toughness. And if you don't mind touching up your knife at the end of every day, like stropping it or whatever, it's a great steel. But uh, compared to some of the more modern steels we have, it's really not that impressive, edge retention wise. Um, generally people use it, makers use it to build 
fixed blades that will be pretty cost effective because it's a it's a cheap steel um i'm a little confused as to why jeff uses ad crv2 when there are other options that are much better out there uh, I know Jeff watches the videos and I will tag him in this, so I would love to hear his reasoning behind using ADCRV2 with this. Um, I have had knives of this build quality and size and such for half the price with better steel. So for example, um, and I'm not, I'm not shitting on Jeff or his work or anything, I'm just being honest here, right? That's the whole point of the channel. You can, you can get um, an LT Wright Frontier Valley for $109 with a really nice leather sheath. You can get this whole package for 109 bucks shipped to your door and it's an A2 tool steel which has really good toughness and better edge retention from my use, okay? Same size, beautiful quality, same fit and finish, like literally perfection from LT Wright, okay? You're getting the same uh, semi-custom quality with better steel for half the price, okay? Same size, basically everything. Um, the Jeff Davidson Gecko is in ADC RV2 steel. It's not really that great so far. And from my use in general, not really that great. And this is like a $300 knife, I believe. I didn't buy it. Jesse bought it for the channel, but I think it was like three, it was either 250 or 300 bucks, maybe even 350. Like they're not cheap. And it has the same exact quality of build as a $109 knife that is basically the same thing. So I'm starting to get a little confused about this. I don't understand why we're not using a better steel. Either lower the price or keep it at $300 and give us a more impressive blade steel, okay? That's, that's what I'm feeling right now so far. Maybe I'll sharpen it and it's gonna have magical edge retention. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. That's the whole point of the um, month testing for me right? So Gecko, not that great in terms of edge retention. Let's take a sip. Ooh, that good. They made a freaking stout that I had last night with, um, I think it was like Madagascar vanilla and Bahati dates or something like that. Vanilla and dates, 13%. When you pour it, it looks like chocolate freaking syrup. When I tell you I was stupid, I'm not exaggerating. I was like hallucinating. It was hilarious. That put me on my ass. Um, we're taking it easy tonight with a 5%, okay? <laughs> Update on the Ultimate Slater. It's doing amazing. We got some really nice teeners on this blade. Not really too much to say about it. It has nested phosphor bronze washers. It's holding up really, really well. It feels great in hand, nice and smooth. Some of Josh's best work. Very filling in the hand as she is thick like yo mama. It just feels really nice. Not a ton of updates on that. I generally don't have a lot to say about these. I basically just test how the, the build holds up over a month of use, um, but they're all great so far, okay? Let's get into a little bit of a chit chat, a story time, shall we, okay? Um, so carrying gear that is useful and cool or trendy or whatever is fun, right? That's part of the fun of the community is getting pieces of gear that you enjoy carrying and using or looking at whatever, okay? Um, but if, you, if you're going to be realistic and you're going to carry gear because you want to be of service to not only yourself but others, education is a really good... Uh, you kind of, you need to be educated, right? Like having knowledge is just as important as carrying cool gear. If you don't understand how to use those tools in specific circumstances, you're still useless, right? So um, interesting little situation tonight. We, we're expecting, I think like five or seven inches of snow here in New Hampshire tomorrow. It's really cooling down outside. Um, we're getting a nice little storm and um, the, the guy that lives in the same house as me was trying to get his um, lawnmower set up with the plow so that he could plow the driveway tomorrow because he doesn't have a, like a plow for his truck, but he has a plow that goes on his little cub cadet, okay? And I'm sitting in my room and I can hear him outside 
trying to start it up and it's not starting up, it's not turning over and I can hear it clicking and the battery's dead, right? Um, and I'm hearing it go on and on for like 30 minutes and I eventually was like, okay, I wonder if he knows that the battery is dead or if he's confused down there. So I go down in the garage, it, you know, he had the garage door open, don't worry, like he was outside, whatever. I'm like, hey, uh, how's it going out here with this? And, you know, he was really frustrated. And he's like, I don't know what's happening. It's not going to start up. Like, it's not starting up. I can't get it to run. And I really need it to run by tomorrow morning because we have a storm coming. And I was like, hey, do you mind if I, if I look at it? And I will say from past experience, sometimes guys get a little, not intimidated, but they, they don't necessarily like when females know as much or more than them about man things mechanics carpentry you name it sometimes they get a little a little sus about it they don't like that but he was like yeah no you can you can look at it it's okay and he's like it's definitely not the battery like it's brand new blah 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 um and i you know get on it and i go to turn it on and literally on the display it says low battery like it is the battery <laughs> and i could hear that from my room but you know i was trying to play it cool so i was like yeah no it it actually like is your battery and if you didn't disconnect the terminals in the summertime the last time you used it like you might just have to jump it you might have to charge your battery and he's like oh okay like i didn't realize i had to do that whatever and i'm like um yeah so you just have to you know whip your truck around and get your jumpers out and jump it and he's like, um, I've never done that. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. Like, I do you want me to help? And yep. Um, I'm like, okay, so just grab your grab your cables out of your truck and I'll and I'll help you teach you how to do it. And he's like, Well, I don't I don't have jumper cables. I don't even know what those are. And I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> so we're like, really, we don't we really don't know. Um So I was like, okay, I'll grab mine from my truck. And I just need you to pull your truck up and bring it right up to the battery of the lawnmower. And I'll, we'll do this together if you've never done it. Um, so he pulls the truck up and, you know, I go to start hooking up the, the clamps to the battery. And he is scared shitless. He is scared fucking shitless of doing this because um, he's never done it before. And, you know, obviously you, you got to be careful uh, jump starting a, a battery or doing anything that could ignite right it, you just have to be careful and know what you're doing so he's really nervous and I was like okay I need you to on one end hold your two clamps away from he, each other do not let them touch do not let them touch anything because I'm going to start hooking it up to the truck uh and I and I need you to hold them away from each other and not touch anything and this poor guy is just like shitting his fucking pants um but we hooked it all up we let it charge for a little while. It's getting dark and cold out. We let it charge for a little bit. I went to go um, turn it on. It still doesn't have, it has more juice, obviously, but not enough to turn over. Um, but, you know, so we kept trying. But in, in this whole experience, I realized um, how important it is to not only carry tools to help you throughout your day and to help other people, but you have to also know like how to do these things. Like it's good to have knowledge on how to change a tire, how to jumpstart a battery, um, you know, how, how to run uh, trucks and, and cars. And uh, in my opinion, it's important to know how to drive like a standard truck. Mine's a standard. Um, how to start a fire, I don't know. Like how to just do things that are helpful in this world. Um, and it's really interesting when you when you come across situations where people have no idea how to do any of it. Like they don't even know what it is. Uh, but it just kind of made me realize that, you know, you, you gotta have the, the tools for the job and to get through your day, but also the knowledge to do that. And it just made me grateful, I guess. It made me grateful that I, I was raised as fucked up as my childhood was, <laughs> I was raised in a house where I was taught how to be efficient, where I was taught how to do things. And as a female, as a woman, I do know how to drive a stick shift and and jump a battery, jump jump another car, change a tire, um, work on small engines, fix carburetors. Granted, we don't use those anymore, uh, but when we when we used to, I knew how to take them apart, clean them, put the put them back together, tune them. Um, sharpen knives, carry knives, work on firearms, safely use firearms. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just makes you grateful that you, that you 
not only have cool tools, but you actually know how to use them and how to go through life helping people with your brain too. Um, just a cool little realization that I had today and I wanted to share it with you guys because I just see a lot of um, a lot of people on the internet that love talking about gear, but it's really cool to know people that have knowledge as well. That's always fun to meet people that like know about those things as well. Um, it's just cool. It, I just wanted to share that with you guys. But that's all I've got for you guys today. Um, I'm gonna go do a couple things and go to bed early because I have to work tomorrow and. It's going to be a day. It's going to be a day for me. So I'll see you guys on the next video. I love you guys very much. Go use your shit. I just burped. That was a beer burp. <laughs> Learn how to sharpen your knives. And I will see you on the next video. I love you so, so much, fam. Take care.